Praise be to the name of our Lord. I am so, so much happy to see us. And thank you for watching uh, today. Our theme for reflection is be prepared. We continue to study the book of First Peter. And our reflection today will come from chapter 4 from verses 1 to 6. I'll read for us the text. Christ suffered while he was in his body. So you should strengthen yourselves with the same kind of thinking Christ had. The one who accepts suffering in his life has clearly decided to stop sinning. Strengthen yourself so that you will live your lives here on earth doing what God wants, not the evil things that people want to do. In the past, you wasted too much time doing what those who don't know God like to do. You were living immoral lives, doing the evil things you wanted to do. You were always getting drunk, having wild drinking parties, and doing shameful things in your worship of idols. Now those friends think it is strange that you no longer join them in all the wild and wasteful things they do. And so they say bad things about you. But they will have to face God to explain what they have done. He is the one who will soon judge everyone. Those who are still living, some were told the good news before they died. They were criticized by others in their life on earth. But it was God's plan that they hear the good news so that they could have a new life through the Spirit. From this text, it is clear that Peter is inviting Christians to continue being prepared for their encounters in life. We know that Peter is writing and engaging with Christians who have faced severe sufferings because of their faith in Christ Jesus. So Peter writes this later to encourage them as they continue to yield in their sufferings. And just like Paul writes in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 8 to 9, we have troubles all around us, but we are not defeated. We often don't know what to do, but we don't give up. We are persecuted, but God does not leave us. We are hurt sometimes, but we are not destroyed. With such prior encouragement, Peter is now intentional on the response of Christians knowing that sufferings are integral parts of their Christian journey. Therefore, he is calling them to be prepared. Father God, we thank you so much for such a time as this that we can come and interact and study uh, your word together. How I pray that it will help us to yield to, to learning on how we can be able to, to persevere through moments of dismay, moments of despair, and that we will look to you as our hope uh, at all times. We thank you and we bless you. For I ask all these things in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. How are you going to be prepared? Number one, just from the text, be prepared by keeping your focus and mind on Jesus, who will help you remain faithful amidst the sufferings. You see, Peter uh, talks about Jesus Christ and he's our perfect example. He says, Christ suffered while he was in his body. So you should st strengthen yourselves with the same kind of thinking Christ had. The one who accepts suffering in his life has clearly decided to stop sinning. As you engage with this verse, uh, in other versions, uh, Bible versions like NIV, ESV, uh, this verse, verse 1 starts with the phrase or opens with the phrase or word, therefore which should bring to the reader's uh, attention that this chapter is a continuation to the previous one. Now, when you read uh, the previous uh, chapter, chapter 3, uh, 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 18, uh, says, Christ himself suffered when he died for you. And with that one death, he paid for your sins. He was not guilty, but he died for people who are guilty. He did this to bring all of you to God. In his physical form, he was killed, but he was made alive by the Spirit. It is, it is indeed true that Christ suffered while he was in body. And through, the sacrifice, and through his suffering, we know that from this text that his death paid for, your, for you and my sins. He died for people who are guilty, died for me and for you. And he did this to bring us back to God. So when we keep our focus 
to, that, to what Christ did. It helps us to be faithful even amidst the sufferings. But also, the other part is we should strengthen ourselves with the same kind of thinking that Christ had. Why should we have the same kind of thinking? In a book, 100 Prison Meditations, Richard Wombrand, who spent 14 years in prison as a Romanian pastor, wrote, I have accepted this proposal. Christians are meant to have the same vocation as their king, that of cross bearers. It is this conscious of a high calling and of partnership with Jesus which brings gladness uh, in tribulations, which makes Christians enter prisons for their faith with the joy of a bridegroom entering the bridal room. The suffering of and the death of Jesus Christ on the cross at Calvary becomes a pattern of our Christian faith and living in the life of service. James chapter 1 verses 2 to 4. Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever I face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. Now, this is a Christian response to all forms of suffering. We know that we have a God who works out all things together for our good. So we should have the confidence in our times of suffering because he is transforming us more and more to be like him in such times. So we should never feel lonely or feel we are uh, dismayed, but have the courage and not to despair. We should be prepared by surrendering to God's will. Let's imagine God's will is like a road. You walk on the right side, the left side, or down in the middle. You jump or you skip or you jog or you walk fast down the road. You know, God doesn't care if you do all those, but he will care if you leave the road. Now, each one of us has a different road to travel or to take. The road is God's will for your life. Now, of course, the, the road will have the twists and turns, but amidst all those, God's plan is accomplished. So Peter writes and says, strengthen yourself so that you will live your lives here on earth doing what God wants, not the evil things that people want to do. For example, understand that all believers will suffer. You know, God calls us to be sexually pure. And these are, these are one of the most difficult things to do because many times we are seeking after our desires and the pleasures of this world. But when we seek after God and through the power of the Holy Spirit who is at work in us, He's able to silence all the wicked pleas and help us to live doing what God wants us to do. Have you ever asked yourself, God, what do you want me to do? There's no greater joy and peace found in a life that is in complete submission to the Father. You must look to Jesus, who is the perfecter and author of our faith, surrendering your life to him because he desires the best for you. And number three, be prepared by acknowledging that you are no longer on your own. In the past, you know, we wasted too much time doing what you don't know God likes you to do. You are living immoral lives, doing the evil things you wanted to do. You are always getting drunk, having wild drinking parties, and doing shameful things in your worship of idols. Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17 says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old is gone and the new has come. 1 Corinthians 6, 19 to 20, you should know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit that you receive from God and that lives in you. You do not own yourselves. God paid a very high price to make you his. So honor God with your body. My friend, you were redeemed not to go back to live the life you used to because God controls you. Acknowledge that you are no longer your own. Choose to live for his greater purposes. Your way of thinking and whatever you do, you should do it to bring glory to God. 
And then be prepared by knowing that you are in the world, but not of the world. Verse 4, uh, verse 4 through to 6 says, Now those friends think that it is strange you no longer join them in all the wild and wasteful things they do. And so they say bad things about you. But they will have to face God to explain what they have done. He is the one who will soon judge everyone, those who are still living and those who have died. You no longer participate in the things that you used to because, remember, you're not your own. So you have been separated from the rest of the world. Yes, you're in the world, but your way of thinking and doing things is not of the world. We live in a, fall, a fallen world. Yes, we need to acknowledge that. But we also need to know that we, we overcome all these uh, wicked pleas uh, by admitting and surrendering to God's will. And also continue to ask God for his supernatural revival that he alone can send to heal our land. So friends, we do not belong here. I know many times we've made, created comfortable places for us on this world, on this earth. But this world is not your home. It's not my home as a Christian. So we should be rest assured to know that as we live in this world, we need to dance on God's tune. But also remember that there's a, there's a, there's a, they, we have to give accountability. We, we know that judgment day is coming and everyone will stand before the God, before God, whether living or dead, to give an account. So be prepared. Are you ready to give an account to God? Verse 6, some were told the good news before they died. They were criticized by others in their life here on earth. But it was God's plan that they hear the good news so that they could have a new life through the Spirit. This is so important because it reminds us that the whole idea is that the gospel is central in the Christian journey of a person. And it is our hope in Christ Jesus. And it is our assurance of having new life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Have you embraced Christ as your Savior? If not, what is holding you back? Are you willing to take a stand for Christ in an environment that is increasingly uh, becoming hostile to your faith. Yes, you may be ridiculed. You may be belittled. You may, it may cost you even your friends or even your work. But it is such an encouraging thing to be faithful to the one who suffered and died for you. And God can always use your life uh, experiences or your challenges to draw people to your circles of to draw people in your circles of influence to himself because in the process he is building you to build he is building you and, and he is helping you to yield to a character that will stand the test of time therefore be prepared be prepared